love to talk about healing the world because it is the thing that has changed my life. It has made me able to accomplish the things I have, to have the body I have, to have the mind I have, and to have the spirit I have. Yoga means the coming together of the mind, the body, and the spirit. And I learned it a long time ago. 1971 was when I started my practice of yoga, and I've been practicing since that time. Today, though, I wanted to talk to you about just the elements of yoga that will perhaps invite you into the world of yoga, because I think the practice is so important. I believe that you can be youthful for your for life. You never lose the initial flexibility that you created when you first do yoga. Also, I believe that anyone can learn yoga, that it will be an individual practice for you, but that it will be your practice. You can practice anywhere. In a hotel room, you take a towel and put it on the floor and do yoga. At home, any room in the house can be your yoga practice. So you need no accoutrements. If you have a sticky mat, that's great, but it can be done anywhere by anyone. Today, what I want to show you is I want to just define yoga for you. I want to tell you about the practice. I want to tell you about the, the benefits. And then, hopefully, I will get you to act on the idea that yoga is a powerful practice. First of all, what is it? The word yoga means the coming together of the mind, the body, and the spirit. I did not learn that. I learned that from my first teacher, Janet Trammell, and I also heard that from Charlotte Bell, my second teacher. But in order to understand where it came from, I had to look up yoga.org, and I found that it was actually initiated in the 15th century by Yogi Swatmarama and then my source was Wikipedia for that. Asanas, or poses, are the headstand is what one I did for you this morning. And that's one that I love to do. I never see it taught in classes today, but it was the one that I started with when I was first learning, learning yoga, and I love it. All postures, though, are to prepare you for meditation. And meditation is that thing that gives you peace of mind during the day. So. When I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and do my headstand, my shoulder stand, my warrior pose, it is for the purpose of getting ready for my day and the time that I spend meditating before I start my daily activities is really important for me. Now pranayama is breathing and this prana is represented by the sun and abhyana by the moon and so I'm always, when I'm in the headstand, my mind is the sun. Sometimes the sun is here and the moon is here, and then the sun is here and the moon is here. And so it's the coming together of all of the elements of the <coughs> Now there are three kind of preparations for doing a, a headstand or a, any kind of pose. There's the, or there are three steps. First of all, uh, no food or drink for a little while because that becomes difficult if you're doing poses. The other thing you need is a sticking mat, and I really swear by sticking mats now because I have found that if you if your feet slip, you're, you could be really in trouble. When you're doing a, a warrior pose, for instance, if your feet are slip, slip then you have more trouble um, with the pose, and you could hurt, hurt yourself. So I love my sticking mat. I didn't start out with a sticking mat, but I got one later. So I love the sticking mat. But you always start with some kind of a preparation and then you execute, and then you come out of it. And so that, those three steps are with every single pose. What happens, I think, today in some of the newer classes is they don't take you through the three steps. Like in every great speech, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you have that for every pose in yoga. So the first thing you saw me do on the headstand was to do the preparation, which is this. And I actually did this for a long time before I actually went up into the pose. For about two years, all I did was step one. That's the preparation step. And then going into it is the slow process. Use your core muscles. And 
Lincoln Road. And then the relaxation afterwards. So in the classes that I've seen, what has been hard for me is seeing people go so quickly through all the poses without that beginning, middle, and end. Relax and breathe <laughs> at the end of it. I have on my, I got this I think from yoga.org, but this is a picture of the chakras. There are seven chakras, one right below your um, body, <laughs> and then one in the kind of pelvic region, which is the, uh, yeah, the pelvic region, and then the center of your body, your solar plexus, and then the heart center, and the, this center, and this is the one that con controls so many of our, our functions of, of our homo hormones and that go through the body, and this one, which is the third eye, and then one right above your head, and keeping those open so that you can Embrace all of the elements of your life, your emotions, your ups and downs, your physical uh, difficulties. Keeping those chakras open is the purpose of yoga and every posture you do. Benefits, relaxation, balance. And as you age, it's so amazing how your balance begins to be a problem and mobility. And so yoga helps you with balance. <coughs> Clarity of mind. It helps your circulation. It gets the, I did uh, the headstand or the shoulder stand for my thyroid gland. And I didn't have to take medication until just a few years ago. But all of my family had to take medication so much earlier because that's the stimulation of this, of the thyroid is one of the best things you can do. That's the shoulder stand. But uh, strength and flexibility. Some people say, what do you do for your arms? Well. I do, sh I do headstands. And I had a, a trainer who said to me the other day, Marilyn, are you a swimmer? I said, no, I do, I do headstands. So it's for strength and for flexibility. Uh, when I started out <coughs> yoga, I, I was not as flexible. Once you have flexibility, you'll have it forever, as long as you don't have any damage to your, your body. Learn while you're young because you will retain that flexibility forever if you learn now. My youngest daughter learned yoga with me because I started yoga right after her birth and she now is my practicing yogini. She loves it, it's part of her life because she learned when she was two and three years old. So I just wanna show you the warrior's pose. Sometimes I have a really hard time being assertive and telling people what I really feel and so I love the warrior's pose because it is my fighting pose. And sometimes I need to fight. The final ending for any yoga session is a word that means thank you and God is blessed or the spirit be with you or the force be with you and it is namaste. Namaste. <laughs> that was my ending. <laughs>